guys, welcome back to the farm. Today is January 4th, I believe, and I am getting ready to plan out my garden for the year. I know it seems crazy, we just had our first snow here in Tennessee, but it is time so that we can be well prepared and ready for everything. So this is my great big box of seeds. Please most of them. I, uh, my husband thinks I might have a seed problem because I have a lot of seeds. I always buy more, I save everything that I plant, so I have extra seeds, like there's a whole bunch of sunflower seeds from <clears throat> a couple years ago, I think. I'm gonna try and sprinkle some of these out on the ground um, where we're trying to put a, a bee apiary, so that'll be fun. But I've got, I finally have gotten organized. So all of these little bags in here have different varieties and genres of seeds in them. So I'm gonna bring you guys a little closer and we're gonna go through here and we're gonna pick out what seeds we're gonna plant for 2022. So while I was editing, I realized that I forgot to show you guys my garden planning tool here. So this is a really cool slide rule um, that I got. It's made by Clyde's Garden Planner here. Uh, I got mine through MI Gardener, which is again, a great site to go to. I know there's lots of different people who sell these and they have their own names up top. Um, Roots and Refuge a while back had them, um, but there's just a whole bunch of them. This is the best tool ever. I've had several. This one's gotten a little beaten up, um, but I've had it for a couple of years. You can see it has spring on one side, you flip it over and you've got fall planting on the other. So for spring, you wanna line up your average frost date with uh, wherever your location is. You wanna look that up, you can search for it online. Uh, it's really simple to find. For where we are at in the mountains of East Tennessee, <clears throat> excuse me, we are right at the beginning of May. So I line that up and it tells you, when do you start your onions? You first wanna plant them uh, mid-March. Peas, a little bit later and you kinda go through. So SI started inside, first planting. Um, these little check marks is when you can expect to have your harvest if you followed these beginning uh, instructions here. The other cool thing about this is it tells you companion plantings, how far apart to plant them and what grows well with each other. So radishes and turnips, you can plant lettuces and peas in with them and they're not gonna compete for nutrients, which is really cool. On the back side is the fall planning guide. So you can say, when is your first frost date? Oh, I can't remember specifically off the top of my head. I wanna say it's about mid-October. Uh, for here. And then again, it tells you when to start things, what you can plant together. Uh, it's super handy. It's not very expensive. Uh, I think it's just a couple of dollars each um, when you're ordering it. So if you're ordering seeds, throw this in the cart with it, and then that way you don't have to pay extra shipping for things. But I wanted to share this with you and let you know that this is what we use here, and it is amazing. So simple to use. Love it. All right, so this is my big box of seeds. There's so many different things in here. I finally got it organized last year um, at the end of the year and I've got everything in bags. So we've got melons, we've got, let's see where you can get to it. Um, what is this? Cover crops, field flowers, things like that, herbs, all of these wonderful things. And I've got them divided up so that it's easier for me to find things when it's time to plant and grow. Before that, it was a big box of mess. Um, and uh, it was so much easier going through things this time to find what I'm looking for instead of having to organize and search and then go through them and then divide out what I want and then lose things and ugh, it was a mess. So this saved my life. If you uh, are in the same boat I am of having way too many seeds and can't find what you're looking for, this will help you. So move that off to the side. I got it all prepped for you so that you don't have to sit here and watch me look through all of my seeds to find what I want. So I'm gonna show you what we're planting this year. So first off, I've got peppers. So these are all my peppers that I'm gonna be starting indoors and getting out in the ground. We've got uh, Golden California Wonders, which is like a bell pepper, chocolate bell peppers, the brown one, 
uh, purple beauty bell pepper. I don't like boring things. I like color and beauty and fun colors in my food and in my garden. So everything is not the normal. Um, sweet banana peppers. My husband loves these. He loves when I pickle them and then he can take them in his truck with them when he's driving and he has pickled peppers. Tomatillos. I've got purple and uh, grande Rio Verde. So we raise pork on our farm as well. And my husband loves some uh, chili verde, I think is what it's called, green chili. And in order to do that, you need lots and lots of tomatillos and lots and lots of peppers. So I was a bad wifey last year and none of my tomatillos grew and did well. So we didn't get any chili verde. <laughs> I'm a bad wife. So I'm gonna try better this year. We're gonna do um, better on the tomatillos and make sure that they grow and produce well for us. Uh, habanero Caribbean red super hot chili peppers. Fun. Um, I'm upside down reading these, sorry. Corno di Toro. Mmm, chili peppers. Please don't judge my pronunciation. I am horrible at it, but it is what it is. And jalapenos. So those are my peppers. Whoops. Oh, I just shot that, <laughs> that rubber band across the room. There we go. All right, peppers, putting them off to the side. Um, next is radishes. These are in no particular order, guys. I have a pile of them sitting next to me. Um, I kept them rubber banded with their groups so that I know what's what when I'm looking for something. Again, got to keep it organized. So we've got breakfast radish. You can see my package is so filthy dirty. This package has been around for a while. Um, I am not one of those people that thinks that seeds are gonna go bad and after a year you gotta throw them out. That's not true. You can use seeds for years and years. This pack was a whole ounce of radish seeds and it's gonna last me a good long time. So I've got breakfast radish, which is super yummy. Black Spanish radish, yum. Watermelon radish, these are so cool. Look at them, they're white on the outside and then they're red in the middle and they taste so delicious. Ah, oh, man, they're so yummy. Uh, white icicle radish. These are nice small little ones. And then the white daikon radish. Now these guys can get huge, but they're really good for uh, developing your soil. So they're big around, but they're also really long. So the longer you let them grow, the bigger they're gonna get. I have a friend who has a YouTube channel as well, and she missed one when she was planting, and it sat there and grew for prob uh, at least a year. That thing was huge. It was, was had to have been about this big around. It was massive. I'll see if I can uh, get her to let me put the link in the in the description below. <laughs> it is so fun to watch. All right, so those are my radishes. Put those over with my peppers. Oh, the melons. These are my husband's favorites. He loves cantaloupes. I'm not a fan, um, but he loves them. So we've got banana cantaloupes. So they're gonna be a long, kind of like a banana is long and kind of narrow, um, but still a cantaloupe. We got honey rock melon cantaloupe, Congo watermelon, black diamond watermelon. Oh, these are so good. So yeah, this one's the crimson sweet watermelon. I saved these seeds from last year's watermelon and it was so delicious. Uh, and then I also have golden midget watermelon. These are all just wonderful things. We had really good luck with our golden midgets last year. They're, they're smaller. They're maybe about this big around. Um, and they're round like a ball instead of the watermelon that's long. Um, but they did really good here. So I'm going to try them again and see what we can get with them. Uh, next is my pumpkins. So we've got the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. You got to have those when you have kids. Um, the Jaredel pumpkin. So this is a blue turquoise colored pumpkin, which is super fun. Um, you know, everyone's talks about the food allergy pumpkins where, it, oh, the teal pumpkin shows that you have um, allergy safe options for trick or treating. So I thought it'd be really cool to grow something that's a natural blue, but still has the same idea to it. Big Max pumpkin, again, it's a good carving pumpkin, but they're huge. And this one doesn't have a picture on it, but I ordered this online. It's the, again, pronunciation is not my best. Galu, mm, Dicene, Galu Dicene 
pumpkin. Where is that? There we go. Right there. So this is supposed to be the best pie making pumpkin. It's a French variety. Um, and it is supposed to be the best thing that you can use when you're making pumpkin pies or pureeing the pumpkins and using them in baking. This is the kind that you want to use. I've never used it before. Brand new. I just ordered it this past season uh, at the end of the year. So it'll be an adventure to see what we get out of this one and how they look. All right. Number next is my winter squashes. So these are fun. Um, Blue Hubbard squash. I had one of these grow to be, I think it was close to 25 pounds last year. This thing was just bigger than my screen is right now. Massive. It was so huge, but it was delicious. It smells and tastes just like a regular pumpkin does. So that's super fun. Um, spaghetti squash. It's a staple in our garden. Uh, acorn squash. Uh, cornucopia gourd. This one is cool. So this is a mix from In My Gardener, and it's a cornucopia mix. So it's more of a decorative gourd mix than edibles. Um, honestly, I grow these to sell at farmer's markets, but also my for, to use as decoration. But then when we're done with them, any extras we have go to our pigs and goats. They love them. They're super nutritious for them, and it's, um, you know, keeps you from wasting things. So super cool that one. And it's all, it's all a variety. So you never know what's gonna pop up out of the ground and grow. I mean, it could be this one. It could be all this one. I think last year I had all this one. <laughs> so it's really fun. Um, and then I have the sweet meat squash. I've not grown this one before. It's new. I got this in a, uh, a mystery grab bag pack from MI Gardener. Uh, I love those, they're so great. You get a discount on the seeds, but it's all a mystery at what you get. So you get some fun things to try, whoops, throwing things, some fun things to try out. They only have those grab bags at the end of the year uh, to get rid of all of their seeds. Um, so yeah, those are great. So next is my summer squash. These are ones that you can harvest all year or all throughout the summer. The winter squash, you wanna wait for the whole vine to die off. Uh, something I learned this past year. <laughs> All the years that I've been growing things and I never got any winter squash to grow, so it was new for me. Um, this one is the Black Zucchini, or Black Beauty Zucchini Squash. Super prolific, wonderful. You can actually use these to make uh, zucchini pickles, right? We call them zickles in our house. So if you have a whole bunch of squash and you don't know what to do with it, you can slice it up, make them into pickles, and they taste exactly the same. Uh, zucchini squash again is our eight ball squash so instead of the long ones that you're used to seeing here these are round really fun um early prolific straight neck squash it's a yellow squash the cocozel squash which is a stripy one super fun that one and then my loofah gourds i couldn't decide if this went with my um with my melons or with my zucchini. So I put it with my zucchini, it's fine. Um, I grow these and then I save them and dry them out and I use them in my soap making for like a scrubby. So these are really fun. You can actually eat them too when they're green, you can eat these. So maybe I'll try that this year too. Try to eat some and we'll take a video of it and see how it goes. I'm saving my tomatoes for last. I keep moving them around on you. All right, so next is peas and beans. Tall telephone peas. I've got two packs here because they are so, so delicious. Set that off. Um, they're super sweet. Oh my gosh, they're just gorgeous. My son, my youngest son, who's five, helped me plant them last year and they grew so well. And it was just, they're just fun to, to shell and to, to can and eat fresh. And then the plants, when you're done, I ripped them out and I gave them to the goats and the pigs and they just devoured them. Oh my gosh, it was like candy to them. So we've got that one. We've got a sunset runner bean, which is really just a green bean here. But look at these flowers, look how beautiful that looks. Oh, so much fun. Again, beauty in your garden, food for your tummy. Um, my next one here is the Royal Burgundy green bean. These have the best flavor. I love these fresh. Like we'll go out to the garden, we'll just pick them and eat them and they're so good. The fun thing with this is it's like magic when you cook them. 
um, they will slowly turn green. When they're green, they're ready to eat and they're a perfect tenderness. Uh, you get a nice little crisp to it and then it's super tender and it's perfect. Love them. Highly recommend Royal Burgundy green beans. Uh, and then we have the Kentucky Wonder green bean, which is just a great canning bean. Oh, wait, wait, I missed one. I also have my huge container here of the Tennessee Half Runner garden beans. This is what, um, really, this is what I'm selling at farmer's markets. This is what people are wanting is the half runner beans because they're really good for canning. So just so you know, half runner beans, great for canning. All right, so in this next bundle, whoops, I've got two. In this next bundle, we've got, um, I'm gonna drop things on the floor, a little bit of an experiment. Now I have never grown eggplants, um, but I got the, Rosa Bianca eggplant and the Casper eggplant in another one of those grab bags. I've never grown them. I've never really cooked with them, but I decided I'm going to save some space for these this year and I'm going to try them out. So it's an experiment for me. I always like to try at least one new plant every year and see how it goes. See how my kids like to eat it. See how we like to eat it. Um, and this year we're going to try eggplant. Uh, then I've got my Romanesco broccoli, which is beautiful. Here in East Tennessee, it's hard for me to grow broccolis and cauliflowers because our springs and falls are not very long. They tend to just skip them and go straight to either winter or um, summer. So I'm gonna try it again. We're gonna keep trying it until I get something to grow. So we've got the Romanesco broccoli, the Waltham broccoli, which is more of your traditional style broccoli. Um, whoops, upside down. And then the snowball cauliflower. Well, I thought I was done. Um, I turned around and found all my tomatoes behind me. And these are the most important things in my garden. I love my tomatoes. Um, and you probably will make fun of me for how many different varieties and kinds that I have, but I love them. Um, so this is my new tomato for the year, Aunt Molly's ground cherry tomatoes. I've never had them before. I've never grown them before. I've never eaten them before, um, but they came in, haha, -ha, a grab bag. <laughs> and so we're gonna try these out. So we got that one. I've got some large cherry tomatoes, the yellow pear tomato, and a red pear tomato. Hey, hey, hey. Um, this one was new. I have not grown this one before, but it looks super funky, super cool. Uh, the mushroom basket tomato. Fun. This one is a family favorite, the black seaman tomato. Seaman tomato. I always say it wrong, and it sounds um, disturbing. But they taste delicious, and they're really yummy. <laughs> The Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomato. I love these. Um, if you're from the South, fried green tomatoes are a thing. Uh, I don't really fry them. I like to just slice them and put them on a sandwich, and they're really good. We got Mr. Stripey Tomatoes. If you can see a little bit, you get the yellow and orange variegation on the tomato, which is fun. Dr. Wikey's Yellow Tomato. This one is great if you have um, issues with acidity. So the yellow or the orange tomatoes are going to have a lower acidity than the red tomatoes are. Um, so they're going to have less issues with your body that way, but they're really yummy. The mortgage lifter, these get to be huge. Let's see, does it say on the back? I had one that was well over a pound last year. Ah, see, uh, commonly weighing over two pounds. So these are massive sized tomatoes. They're really awesome. Love them. Uh, giant Belgium tomato. These are great for slicing. One slice of these will cover your entire sandwich. It's amazing. Love it. Beefsteak tomato is another slicing tomato. Moneymaker tomato. This is a new one for me, um, but it looks like it's more of like a medium-sized tomato, and it grows in these bunches, so that will be cool. An experiment for me. Pink ox heart tomatoes. So this is a form of a paste tomato, but they're big. They're, you know, meh. About that big. They're big sized tomatoes. Um, the alpaca and the Amish paste. So these are my two paste tomatoes that I use to make um, pasta sauces. So spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, um, any of those types of things you want to use these paste tomatoes for. That way it takes less time to reduce it down while you're simmering. Otherwise it can take days. So those are all of my crazy tomato varieties. I love them. I wanted to have more of them. 
um, but I only have so much space and I'm hoping that I have enough space for these. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, I might have to till up some, some new ground, some new areas if I, uh, if I don't. So we'll see what happens. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you have questions or you want to know anything about what I'm planting, hit me up down below, uh, hit the like button and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.